Howdy, folks. I'm Brian, and, uh, well, here's not Reddit yet, but we'll be getting to Reddit in a second. I decided to start a Discord channel. I don't know if anyone's really terribly interested in this or not, but, I mean, I'll hang out in here. I've got a phone, so if you do want to drop by, I mean, yeah, I'll say say hi. Uh, the link is going to be in the stuff below here, so if you want to see it, yep, uh, that's also right here on the screen, so feel free to drop by. And yeah, so let's get started. All right, our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for breaking our house rule about cooking after drinking one time when I'm not the one the rule was put in place for? I love my wife, but when she drinks, she gets clumsy. Like one drink in her and her hands don't grip things very well anymore. Two drinks she will somehow walk into the wall and knock down anything around her, even if the hallways are huge. Three drinks in, and she will upend a table in a room she wasn't even in somehow. Four drinks, and she will probably burn down the house. Five, six, dear reader, I regret to inform you that somehow she has probably burned down your house. I find it funny and cute, but after a number of broken dishes and spilled items and so on, so many broken eggs on the floor, I put down a house rule that meant no drinking and cooking. She has microplaned the side of her thumb so many times that I think her thumbprints may have permanently changed. Everyone in the house obeys this rule. Other people in the house include my brother and his wife, our 18-year-old daughter, and it's a joke because everyone knows the real reason why it's in place, but no one has ever directly told my wife. We just kind of figured she knew. Last weekend, I cracked open a beer before realizing that I had forgotten to start dinner. I set the beer aside, but it was kind of a higher quality one, so I didn't want it to go completely to waste. So as I prepared dinner, I enjoyed it. I figured it was one time. I'm not the one the rule is for, and most adults can safely enjoy a drink. My wife came home from shopping and saw the beer and just lost it. Everyone heard the ruckus and came in and suddenly I was public enemy number one. I explained what happened and kept being told we've had to follow this stupid rule for years when the only person the rule is in place for is wife. Well, that blew up and I don't want to go into details of that. Everyone in the house is mad at me for breaking the rule this one time. My wife is angry at this rule and says this rule is infantizing. I think it wasn't that big of a deal, and everyone should just calm down. Am I the jerk? Spoken like a true jerk, OP. <laughs> okay, I mean, the fact that you have this rule, I don't think is necessarily bad in its own right. I think that drinking and cooking is probably not necessarily a good idea anyways, just because, like, if you drink and cook, then it can increase the likelihood of an accident. Also, you know you're going to divide your attention a little bit and it might not allow the food to come out quite as well as it could have. So my suggestion would be to not drink and cook, period. Now, as for making this rule specifically for your wife, I mean, she's right. It is kind of humiliating. And I mean, I think that if you have a rule, it doesn't matter. A rule is a rule. You had a good quality beer set aside that you didn't want to go to waste. And so instead of putting it in the refrigerator and just saying, I'll drink this when I'm finished cooking, you decided to drink and cook. Which, I mean, again, it's a violation of the rule. So, yeah, I think that you're a jerk here. And that's that. You're the jerk. You can't make a house rule and then decide it doesn't apply to you. Yeah. You're the jerk. You made a rule instead of having an open and honest conversation with your wife. You made the rest of the household abide by your rule, assuming everyone was on the joke at your wife's expense. You broke the rule, got caught, and effectively humiliated her, and wonder why it blew up. Oi. Yeah, I mean, actually, I think the point that this poster makes is pretty good. Like, why didn't they just have a conversation with their wife about drinking and cooking and saying, look, you injured yourself or you've you know broken a lot of dishes you know can you try to be a little more careful if you drink and cook or something like that but again i mean i actually don't think it's a bad rule to set aside 
anyways, I think it's kind of a common sense thing that you're not supposed to do things that can be potentially dangerous while cooking. I mean, while uh, drinking. And cooking is potentially dangerous. People who aren't drinking sometimes lose fingers and stuff like that or catch things on fire and whatnot. So it, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it seems like you probably don't want to do it anyways. All right. Our next letter is titled, Will I be a jerk if I took my stepfather's plant to a new apartment? Okay. So my mother, sister, and I are in the middle of moving to a new apartment. My mother has always been a plant lover and had developed an extensive collection that takes up all of the windows at the new place. We are moving to get away from my stepfather, who is soon to be my mother's ex. They were together for a whopping 13 years and eventually couldn't talk without him screaming at her about every little thing. He's been an abusive piece of garbage the entire time and would follow us around the house to scream at us, and now that we're moving out, He's leaving polite little notes asking us to leave certain tables and such. Now the plant. It's rubber. The plant used to be his late mother's. He never took care of it and my mom worked her magic on it over the years and it looks beautiful and healthy. She told me she's leaving it for him because it's his plant. Would I be a jerk if I just up and took it on our main moving day? And then they have an edit. Edit. I realize this is a terrible idea. As much as I'll miss it, I should respect my mother's wishes and not give him more ammo. Thank you guys for helping me. All right, OP. Well, I'm glad that things kind of have worked out here and that you've realized that you probably shouldn't take his stuff. Maybe you can offer to, you know, buy it from him. Or maybe you can offer to ask if he's willing to part with it. I mean, it would be a shame to have, you know, a beautiful plant not survive because like he's not going to take care of it alternatively i know in some cases you can take clippings of plants and root them so there's potential that you could just take a clipping of this tree and basically have it grow so that would be another option here anyhow take care and good luck you will be the jerk it's his if you take it he will blame your mother and you will just drag him into your life again. Honor your mother's wishes. That, that about sums it up. All right, our final letter is titled, Am I a jerk for selling my expensive Christmas present without telling my boyfriend? I'm a 25-year-old female, and I started my master program last year right before the world became a dystopian nightmare. My boyfriend, a 34-year-old male, and I have been together for four years, and he's watched me scrimp and save in order for me to afford to go back to school. I mean, I was poor, poor. Anyway, for Christmas this year, he surprised me with a really nice and expensive computer since all of my school is online. I was incredibly grateful for the gift, and I did not expect it at all. In fact, I told him I needed to return it because my old computer was fine. He assured me that this was my gift to do what I needed to do in order to graduate school. However, this was the very first expensive gift my boyfriend has bought me. He's bought me some jewelry that was around $100, which I considered to be expensive, but the computer was in the thousands. What I did not expect was how the computer was going to be used as a bargaining tool for months to come. Every week, he'll ask me for money. When I say, no, we really need to save for this blank fund, he'll say, well, we could have did that with your computer, but I still got it for you, so you owe me. It's been several conversations like this, both joking and serious about how I owe him for the computer. I've had several conversations about this with him and told him I don't appreciate how he's using the computer for leverage when he wants me to get him something. He'll apologize, but a week later, he'll bring it up again. It's become such a source of contention that I told him I was going to sell the computer and buy a cheaper one and give him back the bulk of the money. I didn't like having this expensive of a computer anyways and did find it to be a waste of his money. He told me not to, which resulted in a big argument. I firmly told him that it's my gift and I can do with it what I want. I'm unsure if he thought I was bluffing or not, but I sold the computer to a good friend who paid near brand new price. 
I bought myself a cheaper laptop and gave him a bulk of his money back. He is furious at me for not keeping his very nice gift. However, I feel like it was the only way to solve the conflict. Am I the jerk? No, OP. No, you're not a jerk here at all. He is angry at you because you took away his leverage, and that's the reason why he's angry at you. He's not angry that you sold this computer and gave him the money. He's angry that he can no longer lord the gift over your head, and, and that's, I think, a huge red flag here. Like, if he was serious about you keeping the computer, then he would have dropped it after the first conversation and been like, oh, you know what, I guess I can see the error in my ways here. I don't know what came over me. I, I won't bring this up again. And then being a responsible human being, he wouldn't have brought it up again. A gift isn't really a gift if there's strings attached. Plain and simple. So no, he didn't give you a gift. He got you leverage against you. Plain and simple. This is a huge red flag. I would certainly be careful about stuff like this in the future. This may just not be a very good or healthy relationship. So there may be things, you know, that you want to watch out for. Keep an eye out for other red flags, you know, in, you know, other forms of monetary abuse in the relationship. Um, other forms of coercion. So, you know, this may just be the tip of the iceberg for this kind of behavior. I really hate to be the one who says it. Anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk. Those are huge red flags. I hope he has more redeeming qualities. All I see are control issues. And OP says, I'm not going to be the person that says he's never been this way before. Our relationship is perfect because that would be a lie. However, he does have many redeeming qualities I love about him. We just have very different opinions when it comes to money, which, as any couple can tell you, is difficult for most anyways. But I promise he's wonderful in many ways. This is just one thing that maybe therapy can fix for us. Yeah, I mean, hopefully if you two do couples therapy, that'll end up working out for you. The computer was definitely a mechanism for control. Give something with an exorbitant price, then use it to bludgeon the receiver forevermore. All OP has to do is ask herself, why is he so upset that I sold it and returned the money, if he's also forever moaning about having used the money on the gift? Her post here shows that she's figured out every other piece of the puzzle, but seemingly can't see the whole picture because of that one missing piece. OP, you got played. And now he's salty that you accidentally beat him at a game you didn't know was being played. You stumbled your way into a flawless second leg of this two-legged fixture and won the overall match as a result. Alright folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. If you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Thanks so much for watching. Um, again, if you want to join the Discord channel, I've left a link up on the screen here. Um, I, because my channel is so small, I can't actually post external links on the video. Otherwise, I'd link to the external video or external link. But also, I'll put things down in the comments below. So, yeah, feel free to check it out. All right. Take care and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.